key changes and to straddle that huge divide particularly the high end of technology when you look at the space science today the IT the communications right. and the more and more human resources that come out of India not in the next few decades you can say that when the world faces a major challenge because of declining populations aging populations and there will be a shortage of skilled manpower projected maybe to uh, the extent of 40 percent America is not going to suffer it but Europe and some other parts of the world it is countries like India which have stepped up that's what I meant about leadership and inclusive growth yes because how do you empower your people by giving them access to the nation resources and opportunities and institutions and these were the programs whether it's the Bharat Nirman whether it is investment in rural India creation and expansion of infrastructure okay a rural employment guarantee scheme if you look at the resources which India has been able to commit it would have been unthinkable that India a country which has so many poor people a country which has so many developmental challenges and has an aspirations of its people and their dreams to deal with will be able to mobilize and commit resources to create one of the largest social security nets in five years I'm not saying that we have reached where we want to be but certainly our direction is clear our mission is clear the leadership has a vision and the world is recognizing what India can do today and in the coming decades all right all right sir. Uh, when, when you look at when you look at the position in India from the point of view of Pakistan and from the neighborhood in general is that good enough India is setting its own house in order India is growing very fast India is, will be an engine of growth perhaps, perhaps in the world or would you like to see a change in the way India deals with its neighborhood and with the rest of the world itself well uh, in the region uh, India is admired as it has admiration globally also for its growth and the progress it's made in the last couple of decades but India's growth has really not had the kind of multiplier effect on the region as it should have had if you look at China for example what China's growth has done has had that multiplier effect on ASEAN and other neighbor, neighbor countries we're still waiting for that multiplier effect and why is that? I think one view is that India is really not engaged enough with the region, in its own region, with SARC. If you look at um, India trade, um, overall, within SARC is about uh, less than 3% of its total trade. So I think from a regional perspective, what we're looking for is India to engage more economically, trade. Trade is very, very limited. And I think from uh, the Pakistan point of view, uh, we hope that we'll see more of that. But when, when you say that India is not engaging enough with its, with its neighbor, and, and you're right, the sort of trade which is happening in the region is a small fraction of what, what it perhaps could be. Is it also because of the bilateral problems that do exist? I mean, when you're talking about building out trade between India and Pakistan, it would always be held hostage to some of the other problems that would be there in the two countries. Well, clearly that's the case. But uh, I think notwithstanding the bilateral problems, uh, I think there are also opportunities to open up trade more. Um, what we have is a basic framework with software in place, but what we don't see on the ground is actual progress being made. There are all kinds of barriers, etc. Minister, if I could just get you to respond to that. Is, is the region an important area or an arena for India to, to be in or to play in? Or do you see India now having a slightly different view of itself in the world where it doesn't see the region that important, it wants to play a more global role? You see, we are rooted to reality and we are pragmatic and truthful in our approach. There's no question of India even thinking that it will race ahead and leave its neighbors behind. And that's why India has been insisting to make SAFTA meaningful, like NAFTA is. Why can't South Asia be the same? Why can't we open up our hearts and our borders? There are certain painful realities that's the violence and terrorism that exists in our region that is hurting everyone whether it's Pakistan India and the region as such we know what's happening in Afghanistan now these are not the things which is which are beyond uh, uh, our control but collectively we have to put our minds and uh, hearts together the leaders the leaders of the civil society India has uh, made unilateral offers to give access to the Indian market to all the SAR countries. I did so at the last, uh, last uh, SAFTA uh, ministerial in Kathmandu. 
And if you look at the number of tariff lines where India has zero duties, more than 90% of a tariff line. And we are happy that Pakistan is also increasingly realized that this is the way to move forward. But when you look at the, uh, India's engagement with the region, but I would just like a slight correction here you, uh, without quarreling with the perception because we want to work together, is that we are engaged with the region. In a, with a extended neighborhood. India has signed an FTA with the ASEAN countries. So, Look at our trade with ASEAN. I mean, you can feel free to quarrel with that perception if you no, want to. I mean, what, I'm saying, to do so, but what I'm saying that this, that perception, because it is not true, I've given the details. Okay. We signed uh, FTA with ASEAN. He referred to ASEAN. Okay. Look at our trade with China. We may have issues of the balance of trade with China. Okay. So, so our Martin, commitment yeah. is very I, I really want to get Mr. Banga in on this that. note. Yes, do you see... Do you see the, I'm just trying to figure out how important you see the region when you look at it either from within India or when you look at it from a company like Unilever. Do you see the region as being important or do you say, look, there's India and India has to be viewed in a completely different category and the region is not important uh, per se when you're... When you're I think there's no doubt India. that the region is important and it's the region as uh, has just been said actually is all around India and that's it's also got a lot of similarities and therefore it does come together. But I want to say one thing before that. I think that actually the world will expect much more from India than India will expect from the world. And I think this is to do with India's ethos, history, self-reliance and, and way of thinking. It's very deep-rooted in that and I think that is going to be the case. Now, um, as we look forward today, what will the world expect from India? I think many things have been said, but I think we're at an inflection point in the world. In some large parts of the world, we have seen perhaps the end of recession, and I say perhaps, but we certainly haven't seen the beginning of growth. People are looking for new development models, new society models, new growth models. Everywhere these questions are being asked. And if they're not being asked, they're certainly within people's minds and hearts. And I think India has the unique opportunity to provide a source of inspiration. It's been talked about earlier, it's vibrant democracy, but more more importantly, creating new growth models, inclusive growth models, which no one has done before. All other democracies have huge distribution of income issues right. or a source of inspiration for business, where businessmen in India have for years done more with less. Or for consumers, actually, as consumers in the West learn to grapple with this new reality, I think the Indian consumer's approach to frugality and value consciousness will be a source of inspiration. I think apart from this, of course, the world expects India to be a huge marketplace as we move from 1 billion people to becoming 1 billion consumers. And that's important, of course, for India in its own development, but also for the world. But perhaps one last thing, uh, certainly it's not been said thus far in this session. I think with all of this inflection, there is another question, and it's about responsibility. And whether we like it or not, I think the world will expect India to be part of the climate change solution, even though it was not the problem. Right. As part of the climate change solution, as part of the trade solution as well. And I do want to come to some of those areas where the world will be expecting India to play a more responsible role. But if I could just get your reaction, uh, Mr. Holmes, to some of the stuff that's been discussed so far. When the United States looks at India now, do you see India, you used to see India in a certain regional context, and specifically India, Pakistan, for a long, long period of time, or through the prism of the Cold War. Where do you see India now? Do you see it as a, as a global partner, as a global ally, as uh, viewed, uh, rooted more from a, from a global point of view or more from a regional point of view? We see India as a global partner. I think if you look at the way the world's changed from seven or eight industrialized countries being the sort of board of directors of the global economy, now it's 20. But among those 20 are a certain number of countries that really are particularly dynamic and are particularly important in this overall uh, system. And India is one of them. So we very much see India as a partner. We see India as a partner in improving the global trading system. We see India as a partner in addressing uh, global energy problems. And, and I think that is one dimension of the relationship. It, it's sort of G20, but, it, but, it's, but it's beyond that. The other thing, though, that's very interesting, for Americans in particular, is we see India also as a partner in some of the newer areas of, of technology. One of the things that we would like to do is because we know from the fact that there are so many Indians in the United States who are so successful, there's a very personal set of relationships that are developed. It's not just at the political, the head of state level. You know, if you look at if you look at entrepreneurs in, in the United States, many of them come from India. And this was stressed in, in, in Prime Minister Singh's visit to the United States. The role 
the dynamic role of the Indian community in the United States has done two things. It's pulled us together, not just on political grounds, but on cultural, on scientific, on personal grounds. So what we do is we're hoping, as a result of a lot of agreements that have been signed during this summit, but a number of other uh, areas of, of, of communality as well, to work with Indian scientific community, to work on breakthroughs in agriculture, to work with Indian breakthroughs 